What's up guys, Rogue9 here and welcome to my series on Rainbow Six Siege. With the closed beta test recently finished, I will be releasing a series of videos giving you my impressions of the game so far. In this episode, I'll be presenting to you all the rifles you can use. And with that, let's start out with the rifles available to the SAS operators. The British L85A2 assault rifle is based on the original SA-80 developed in the 1970s and 80s by the Royal Small Arms Factory. In the year 2000, German weapons manufacturer Heckler & Koch was given the contract to upgrade around 200,000 SA-80 rifles, and these upgraded rifles were designated L85A2. Its in-game magazine size of 30 bullets, mobility of 10, and a damage rating of 48, which is exactly on the mean average of all rifles, make it a very well-balanced gun. Its fire rate of 670 rounds per minute is the slowest of all automatic rifles in the game, but its great controllability make it more than enough of a match for any enemy. Next up we have the HK33, which is a 5.56mm version of the G3 developed by Heckler & Koch in the 1960s. Its mobility rating of 10 is bang on average, but its magazine capacity of only 25 shots, its fire rate of 749 rounds per minute and its damage of 45 are all slightly below average when compared to the other rifles in the game. But despite being a seemingly weaker choice on paper, this rifle performs perfectly well and you'll never go wrong picking it. Moving on to the FBI SWAT units, we start out with the SIG 556XI. This rifle is a modern version of the original SG 550, which was first produced in 1986 by the Schweizer Industriegesellschaft. Its in-game damage rating of 49, fire rate of 690 rounds per minute, and the standard mobility of 10 and magazine size of 30 make this rifle very comparable with the L85, only slightly better. The next rifle available to the SWAT units is the Remington R4C personal defense weapon. Introduced by Remington in 2010, this rifle is a very modern clone of the well-established AR-15, M16 and M4 platform. In the game, its slightly below average damage rating of 44 is counterbalanced by a high rate of fire of 860 rounds per minute and a slightly higher mobility of 9. The iron sights that this weapon comes with might look funky, but I find they obscure quite a lot of your vision. Once upgraded with an optical sight though, this gun becomes a formidable tool. The French GIGN have access to the HK417 battle rifle. First introduced in 2005, this weapon was designed and manufactured by Heckler & Koch. It is essentially an enlarged version of the HK416 assault rifle, using the 7.62x51mm NATO round and intended for use as a designated marksman rifle, this weapon has the highest damage capability of all rifles in the game at 65. To balance this out, the rifle is only capable of semi-automatic fire, has a slightly lower mobility rating of 12 and a magazine size of 10 shots only. Given its real-world role, this weapon excels at long-distance combat, but as I've just demonstrated, it excels even after you've entered a building. The second rifle available to the GIGN is the polar opposite to the 417 and seems to be a hybrid of the real-world Farmas F1 and G2. The in-game model of the rifle has the small trigger guard and straight box magazine of the F1 variant of the rifle, but the fact that it has 30 bullets instead of only 25 clearly makes it a G2. The weapon was developed in the late 1960s by the Manufacture d'Armes de Saint-Étienne and has been in production since 1975. In the game, the mobility rating and magazine size are the standard 10 and 30 respectively, while the damage rating of 42 is the lowest of all rifles, but this is balanced out by the highest fire rate of 980 rounds per minute. Playing as the Russian Spetsnaz, you will have access to the AK-12. This gun is an updated version of the AK-74 introduced in 2012, and it was co-designed by the legendary Mikhail Kalashnikov. 
The weapon is available in a whole range of calibers, including the Russian 545x39mm and 7.62x39mm. In the game, the rifle has the standard magazine size of 30 and mobility of 10, and with a mid-range damage of 47 and high rate of fire of 850 rounds per minute, this can be a highly effective firearm. I personally like this weapon a lot, especially after attaching a silencer. Last but not least, we have the GSK-9, and first up for them is the HK-416C Carbine. In service since 2004 and produced by Heckler & Koch, this is the ultra-compact version of the HK-416, which itself is based on the AR-15 platform. The HK416 is in fact so compatible with other rifles from the AR-15 family that the upper receiver of the HK416 is sold separately and can be attached to other rifles such as the M4. In the game, the weapon has a slightly below average damage rating of 45 and slightly low fire rate of 700 rounds per minute, but an increased mobility rating of 9. With a standard magazine size of 30 rounds, these stats make the weapon the weakest rifle of all in the game. But it is worth noting that as of the closed beta, this is the only rifle available to defenders. The only other options open to defenders being submachine guns and shotguns. So with this in mind, the 416C is actually one of the most effective weapons you can use if you're playing on the defensive team. If you're playing the GSK-9 on the assault team, you will have access to the SG-552 Commando. Just like the SIG 556XI used by the FBI SWAT teams, the 552 belongs to the SG-550 family of weapons. Released in 1998, the 552 is the compact carbine variant of the 550. In the game, this weapon is almost an exact copy of the 556XI, with the only difference being a damage of 50 instead of 49. The fire rate of 690 rounds per minute, mobility of 10, and magazine size of 30 bullets remain the same. With the highest damage of all fully automatic assault rifles, at least all of those available in the closed beta, this is in my opinion one of the best guns you can choose. The only downside to this weapon is the odd front sight post of the iron sights. In the heat of battle, it can be easy to forget that the point of impact is right at the end of the vertical post. But, as with other odd iron sights in the game, this problem can be easily fixed by attaching an optical sight. And finally, we come to the Steyr Aug A2. This is based on the original A0 version of the weapon introduced in 1978 and produced by the Steyr Mannlicher GmbH und Co. KG. Introduced in December 1997, the A2 variant of the weapon features a redesigned charging handle and the option to replace the iconic telescopic sight with a Picatinny rail. Its damage rating of 44 puts it among the least powerful rifles in the game, and with a mediocre fire rate of 770 rounds per minute, and the standard mobility of 10 and magazine size of 30, this is one of my least favorite rifles. And apart from the poor weapon stats, the charging handle also obscures quite a lot of your vision in the center of the screen. Given that the GSK-9 operators also have access to one of the arguably best rifles of the game, there is almost no reason to use the so, as always, I'll end the video with a quick list of all the guns we've just run through, and again they are ordered according to my personal preference. The AK-12 stands out to me with a reasonable amount of damage and a very high rate of fire, but the Farmas with its extreme rate of fire is also a great contender. At the bottom of the list we have the HK416C, but as I mentioned before we have to keep in mind that this is a defender's weapon while all the other weapons are available to the attackers. Giving the attackers more powerful weapons is a strategic choice by Ubisoft, since lying in ambush is arguably less difficult than entering a building. And while we're on the topic of game design, I think it's worth mentioning that even though I have compared and contrasted these weapons, the balancing has been handled incredibly well. The strengths of each individual 
individual weapon in one department is always very well counterbalanced by weaknesses in another. And even though I have ranked these guns from 1 to 10, the fact is that in terms of performance they are almost exactly the same. And in the end that is exactly what you want from a competitive online multiplayer game. If the last 10 minutes have been informative and or entertaining for you, go ahead and give that like button a click. And as always, I hope you enjoyed the video and I will see you in the next episode.